I'll start off just a quick question here, Richard, from what you've seen from the first uh, couple weeks of practice. What are your thoughts on the team? Uh, uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, uh, I think the change has been really great. I mean, it was just really molded together. It's really impressive just to see how the hard work they've been able to put in. Most of the guys have been here since July and just been getting after it every single day. Really proud to see how my uh, now juniors have really grown because one of the things that we played on, especially last year, is just the fact of our depth and to see like the increased development in our junior class is going to be an integral part to the season. Okay, John Schofield, please. Hey, Richard, John Schofield with Sing Second Sports. Thank you for joining us. Hey, my first question is really, what, what do you think about being handed the mantle of the captains, the captaincy for the, your team? Um, you know, it's not just being a three-striper. It's, it's having the responsibility and the authority in the hall, in the locker room. Um, it's a great honor. Can you just kind of encapsulate what it's like to be selected as the leader of this team? Absolutely. I think it's just it's probably something that's just impacted me, just the way that my teammates have that trust and level of like leadership under me. I think it's just really impressive to see that I was voted in this position. We had like an amazing array of senior leaders, Greg Summers, John Carter, and Christian Silva. And to be the guy out of those four is just amazing. And also the big thing for me with this being a captain is also just being able to lean on my other seniors. I think that's one of the biggest part this is the way we've been able to stick together for these past four years is just knowing that if I have any questions or if I feel like I need an extra opinion on something, I can always rely on my seniors. I know that that message is going to relay through the entire team. Uh, Gene, do you have a question at all? Yeah, just Richard, just out of the shoot, two ACC teams, you got to play Virginia and Virginia Tech. Just what are the challenges um, of facing schools from, you know, the premier, one of the premier basketball conferences in the country, and especially Virginia at their place to kick off the season? I think uh, one of the major challenges, of course, is going to be the size aspect. I mean, as it looks, our tallest player is 6'8". I think that's where the uh, heart comes into ability. For me, I've always been playing basketball around the same height and just been playing against bigger opponents. And I know that's the same for all, all of my teammates. I mean, there's nothing that can stop that heart aspect. You're going to give it your all no matter what the outcome is going to be. And just knowing that we have the ability to play these two teams and we can compete, can compete is just something that we're all looking forward to and can't wait for the opportunity. And when you're facing Virginia, obviously known for defense, is there any way in practice to kind of simulate what, what, you, what the pack line, the different challenges that pack line presents? I mean, of, co uh, of course, uh, it's no secret. We have our own little matchups and we call it three defense. And that's what we always try to integrate that into practice. Uh, recently, is just trying to have that high level of intensity. I mean, one of the big things is, of course, we're playing against Virginia, but they also have to play against us too. So that's, that's, that's the real aspect as well. Thank you. Patrick Stevens. Hey, Richard. Just wanted to ask a bit about, obviously, the way last year ended for you guys was – uh, was a little bit, um, little bit disappointing, uh, just given everything. How have you guys kind of responded to that in the off season? And uh, you know, as a side side to that, just how good is it to be something closer back to normal as you head into this year? I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear the last part of the question. Oh, just just that it would basically just how nice is it for things to be at least a little closer to normal again? after all the restrictions and whatnot of a year ago? Oh, it's, it's, it's amazing. I uh, can't, can't complain just the way we're actually able to work out this off season. Last year with all the COVID restrictions, I'll say our team probably didn't work out together until maybe October or early September. And this, this season, we've been with each other since late July. I mean, it's already a big change just on the sole purpose of that connection between all the classes. We're able to go in day in, day out, just work and get better. And now we don't have to worry about something like having to sit out a couple of games due to close contact or contact tracing, knowing now that the yard is almost 100 percent vaccination. I mean, it's it's a game changer for us. And, and you mentioned John Carter a little bit earlier, just having been his teammate now for, for several years. Uh, just what sort of impact do you think he's going to have uh, in his senior season on, on your guys' success? I think it's going to be a huge impact. I mean, I'm watching John 
also being a student of the game, I like the way watching him play when we play a five on five. I mean, just the way he's hitting the shots, getting to where he wants to be on the court. I mean, it's, it's like really awesome to see him take that jump, especially as a teammate, just watch him grow the past four years and just become a closer friend of his. It's just understanding the way he thinks on and off the court. I think it's just awesome. Wags, anything here? Yes, Richard. Um, Cam Davis was the go-to guy. With the end of games, that's who usually had the ball in his hands making plays. Who's going to take in on that role of stepping up down the stretch and making big shots when they really need them? I'll say uh, for sure it's going to be our two senior guards, John Carter and uh, Greg Summers, taking those shots as well. And then one of the big things as well is just, just our depth. I mean, we have a lot of guys who are coming in and out of the game, Patrick Dorsey, Taylor Walker, Tyrone Nelson, all these guys. I mean, we have that could hit those big shots when it comes down, just that, that balanced approach that we have, especially this year. You know, last year, Cam was the man, and, and, and I love him for that. And he was able to take those big pressure shots, whether he made them or missed them, is just knowing that he was going to do that for us. And he always took that responsibility. And just now, just having this balanced approach, just having all these upperclassmen we have this year is just really an awesome opportunity. Wags, you're muted. You're muted. Sorry about that. Um, uh, you talked about the junior class. Yes. Uh, are there anyone other than the obvious of guys stepping up other than Yoder, Nelson, and Walker, guys that we are familiar with that have already played considerable action? Any other juniors you're talking about that are stepping up? I'll say uh, definitely Nate Allison. Uh, he's uh, probably going to be in our that three spot for us taking uh, the minutes out. Uh, Alec Larry used to have for us, just having that extra depth going down for the five, four position. I think he's been looking great in practice. It's just a workhorse, an animal. is definitely a lot stronger this year. You guys going to see that. But, I mean, he's just – he's an animal. I just love the way that he competes and just knowing that he's continuing to take these next steps. And, of course, all the names that you have mentioned, all these guys, they're doing really well in practice and they're really competing. I love the way practice has been going. We're just actually just bumping in and getting after it together. Well, and then last for me – I. Cam Davis was also the point guard, and that's the kind of one glaring spot that needs to be filled. Um, you got a lot of other returning talent at the other positions. Uh, how's the point guard play looked in practice? Oh, I think it's been looking great. Uh, we have Austin Inns, also P.J. Roach running that one one spot. Rex Summers coming, coming in there as well, trying to uh, see what we could do. Uh, it's just awesome because we have that, as again, it's like just that balanced attack. All these guys, we practice the one, two, and three positions, and they're able to facilitate the basketball, get people to ball in open spots, and also make sure they get be able to hit that shot if need be. Thanks. Any other questions for Richard before we let him get going? Justin, can I ask one more? Yep, go right ahead, John. Uh, Richard, uh, last from me, um, you know, the, the, the big kid Aldama from Loyola gets drafted last year. You still have C.J. McCollum in the league. Is there something you want to say about how competitive the Patriot League is, um, the level of athleticism? You know, you're not just starting off, you know, at JPJ against a really good Tony Bennett coached Virginia team, uh, but then you have Virginia Tech, and then you have a really good Patriot League. How do you – how do you summarize how good the Patriot League has become and is, uh, particularly when everyone gives all this attention to all the other big conferences? I think definitely it is a sleeper conference. I mean, you have all these guys. I mean, as you said, Santi Aldama, C.J. McCullen, and there's so many different guys. And just knowing a uh, point guard from Colgate this past year, he was able to get a con just recently signed a contract with NBA team. I mean, it's just like you have so many different guys in this conference. And when they when you get when you see that they're able to play in all these different levels, you just realize how much talent is truly here. I mean, it's really cool to see we get to play against some of the best players in the conference, and then also we're gonna to get to play a lot of players in the non-conference as well. I mean, just be able to compete. I mean, the games, the basketball is just a game of runs, like a coach always tells us. And any team you get beat, and then you have all these wonderful athletes on each team is just awesome. Sounds good. Thank you, Richard. We'll let you get to practice. Uh, Coach DeChell should be here any moment. Oh, there it is. Rich, thanks All for right. your time. Thank you.
Coach Chalice, you hearing us okay? Yeah, good afternoon. Great. If you wouldn't mind just starting off here with just uh, some of your opening thoughts on the season, please. Well, you know, Justin, I, um, every coach, I think, at this point in time is very, uh, uh, you know, we all think we can do all these wonderful things, right? You get started, you go, oh, we can do this, we can do this, and then uh, the rubber starts to meet the road somewhere along the way. Um, you know, we're very excited about our team. Uh, we, we, you know, I think we, uh, we got some very talented kids. Uh, we, we look forward to a very aggressive schedule, a uh, very challenging schedule, very aggressive schedule. Um, I think that's important. Um, we got a lot of returning guys, so we've got some experience and now we've got to put it all together and see where it goes and see where it, you know, where it takes us. But, uh, I like our team. I like our energy, our enthusiasm. Uh, we've had some really good days of practice. Um, I would say that the negative, the only negative so far has been injuries. The last 10 days, two weeks has been very challenging for us. Richard hasn't practiced in over two weeks. Uh, Austin Ninja hasn't practiced in over a week, two weeks. And then uh, Tyler Nelson's had a bad ankle. He's back. But now Pat Dorsey really rolled his ankle the other day. Uh, Badly, he's out for weeks. Uh, so we've had a lot of foot injuries, um, which is, you know, which is not allowed us to maybe progress as fast as I want it. So other guys are getting an opportunity, and, and I'm hoping down the road that's going to be helpful for us. Uh, the other guys get some opportunity to play or at least practice more and get more reps and so forth. So, um, you know, we're ready to go. We're excited. We're ready to go. I think it's 12 days away now. Um, I keep reading Rothstein stuff, and every day it's, a you know, the countdown. Uh, we've scrimmaged VMI last weekend. Did okay. Didn't have those guys, and we did okay. This weekend will be a huge test for us. Uh, we're going to Delaware, who's picked to win the Colonial, I think, number one in their league. Big, long, athletic guys. Uh, so that'll be a challenge for us. So, uh, you know, we're trying to prepare and see where we're at. Questions for Coach DeCellis, anyone? I'll start off with hey, Ed, Gene. Uh, Gene, go ahead. Hey, Ed. Sure. Hey, Ed. Gene Wong, how are you? Good to see you again. Nice to see you, um, Gene. You mentioned aggressive schedule. Obviously, you're out of the shoot with Virginia, the regular season champion in the ACC, and then you get Virginia Tech, the number three team in the regular season last year. Um, just starting with the Cavaliers, how do you kind of simulate what they do on defense, or can you kind of simulate what they do on defense to get ready for, you know, what's probably going to be a pretty raucous environment at JPJ? Yeah. I, well, you really can't. Here's a, We can simulate their rotations. We can simulate the pack uh, for the most part. What we can't simulate is their size. Uh, and that's usually the preparation for the games that, and I always, you know, tell our guys and staff, it's going to take us a few minutes to get uh, up to, up to speed with the speed and the, uh, and the, you know, the agility and, and the, you're never going to get, you know, we can't simulate the length They're They're really long. Virginia is right. really long this year. Yeah. And then you got Virginia tech and then you get Louisville. I mean, it's, so it's, you know, you can't simulate the speed of the game, the length of the game, the quickness. The court will look a lot smaller because our guys are a lot bigger and longer. You can't simulate that. But we know where they're, you know, we know how they're going to, you know, hard hedge ball screens or trap the post. And we can work on those those things and what the looks are. Now, I don't know if we can make the looks, but we know what the looks will be because they'll get their hands on off some balls and so forth. So, um it is what it is. You know, we're we're gonna we're gonna go play and play really good people and be aggressive and play really. This might be the this is by far the nar hardest non-conference schedule I've had. Um, some of it purposely. Um, some of it's just return games that we have to to do because of the last year's situation. So, uh, but you know, as Ernie Nestor, my old assistant, used to say, you know, no one really cares. No one cares about your problems. 50% of the people <laughs> don't care, and the other 50 are glad you have them. Um, right. But, uh, you know, I, I'm, I think our kids will be excited to play. They're, they're excited to play the schedule we're going to play. I, I spoke with Mike Young recently and said you've, you guys have known one another, one another for a while since your days in the Southern Conference. Just what's your relationship with, with Mike like? And um, 
you know, how are you looking forward to kind of renewing acquaintance with someone you've known for so long? Yeah, so I've known Mike from our Southern Conference days. He was an assistant when I was the head coach, and then he, he got the head job at Wofford. He's done an outstanding job as the head coach at Wofford, outstanding. And uh, it was really nice to see him get a great opportunity at Virginia Tech. He's from that area. Uh, and he's done a good job at Virginia Tech. I'm really, really uh, appreciative of him bringing his team to the veteran classic. The veterans, you know, he could go a lot of different places and do a lot of different things with his team. But um, he has great respect for the academy and, uh, you know, what we stand for. So I'm, I'm very, very uh, thankful that he's uh, willing to bring his team here to play us. Thank you, Ed. We'll go uh, John Schofield and then Patrick Stevens. Hey, Coach, John Schofield here with Sing Second Sports. Um, it, you know, my, my first question, not that I'm not interested in the real basketball stuff, but, you know, on one of our episodes last year, you talked pretty revealingly about all the practice you had to do for the COVID restrictions. You know, hey, here's how we come in and sit on the bench. Here's when we wipe down the seats. With the evolution of where this pandemic is, are there any like just logistical and operational differences that you can expect this year with regard to the pandemic with how you do your day-to-day -day basketball ops? Yeah, great question, John. We're, we're still, um, we are still very cautious. In fact, uh, I had a meeting the other day with our, our head trainer, Hannah, and um, about, um, you know, the seats on the bench, we had a scrimmage with VMI. We still separated everybody. Everybody's names were still on the back of the chairs. She's still wiping down the chairs after guys stood up. We still had a timeout area at the end of the bench and stools. Um, we don't have to mask now for the timeouts, which, which <laughs> makes life a little easier. Guys don't have to run to their chair and grab their mask. Uh, but we're still very, very cautious, to be quite honest with you. We're we're, we're, you know, we spoke about how the other teams, how the bench is going to be because now they're going to have fans, right? Because last year the things were pushed back and you had more space. So we're anxious to see what kind of seating we'll have on the road. I can tell you at home, we're going to, we're going to, our chairs are going to be um, separated. A player's name, coach's names will be on the chairs where we sit. Uh, we're going to try to have some separation. There's going to be a timeout area at the end of the bench. So we're going to do some of the things that we did last year. Our guys wear their masks inside when they come into Halsey. Uh, they have their mask uh, on, their, on their chairs in practice. So if we get together, they mask up. Uh, as a staff, we're still working on a Halsey. Um, you know, I, I don't uh, – I get my second or third shot tomorrow. Um, John Perry is on our staff. He's got an infant. We don't want to do anything to bring a COVID situation home to Charlie. Uh, I'm 62, diabetes, stroke. I don't, I don't need to get this thing. So we mask up. So we're still working out of Halsey. Or, uh, we go out in the court today, this morning, and walk through some things. So, John, and, you know, short answer would be we're, we're still very cautious about what we're doing and uh and hannah's still trying to keep us in, in check um because it's really easy to let your guard down and um because i've just read and heard you know there's breakthrough cases with folks who have been vaccinated so uh we are uh i'd say we're still in the in the cautious phase so quick follow-up from me coach um yeah and more along the lines of basketball x's and o's so we're talking about COVID. There's been a lot you know, said about COVID years that players are getting, like Colin Gillespie for Villanova is a preseason first team All-American coming back you know, through the generosity of a COVID year. Redshirt years and COVID years don't exist at the US Naval Academy. So walk me through how you think this affects the competitive balance and how the Naval Academy team who doesn't get this benefit you know, can can still compete against teams who are getting extra years and extra guys? Well, it, it is what it is. It's not changing. There's nothing we can do about that. We I just got to prepare our guys, um, you know, for what we're going to see throughout the uh, throughout the year. Some, you know, we'll, we'll face against some older teams. We're an older team. You know, I, I say this. Uh, we've got some kids that went to naps. So there's an extra year for us. And, and so – 
I got John Carter who went to Naps. I got Greg Summers who went to Naps who will play a lot. I got Austin Inge who play a lot, went to Naps. And P.J. Roach and Pat Dorsey, we getting him healthy. Uh, Jalen Walker went to Naps. So that's an extra year for those guys. Uh, so we – we won't use it as, as an excuse. I can I can uh, assure you that. I got to be honest. When we talk about our guys in the league, you know, when our guys are trying to put it together, like who left and who's back. The transfer portal has been more, more relevant, I think, in a sense that, you know, guys pick up guys and they don't have to sit. And so we're trying to research guys that, you know, maybe came from different places that maybe aren't, you know, names, institutions, but are really good players and they, they got really good numbers. And so, you know, we're trying to find, you know, we're trying to get vi film and video on those guys that are coming, transferring into the Patriot League. Um, it is what it is. It's not changing. It didn't change. And, you know, we, we deal with some different things that other institutions don't. Um, but it doesn't change what our what we feel as a staff and the players in terms of our expectations for our program. Thanks coach. Patrick Stevens. Ed, uh, it's good to see you talk to you again. Um, wanted to ask a bit about how last year ended and obviously that was disappointing, but overall last year was pretty good for you guys. How much do you think that gives you guys something to build off of and how much of a, of a, I don't want to say breakthrough because you guys have been good previously, but to yeah. win, win the conference is still pretty significant. Right? Yeah, I think uh, for our guys, I, you know, I, I thought we had a great year. It was not easy doing what they did. It was not easy playing back to back. It was not easy traveling on the bus the day of the game and eating uh, eating your your pregame meal in a container and getting off the bus and stretching and playing and driving back. So that they they did really good stuff. Um, and, uh, they were, they did it right from start to finish. Um, you know, we had some good wins. Um, we didn't lose a road game other than Maryland all year. Uh, pretty, pretty good stuff. Um, they did what we asked them to do to try to keep themselves safe. Uh, and at the end of the year, it didn't, didn't happen for us. You know, it didn't happen for us. Uh, we got some kids that contact tracing. And that uh, and that hurt us, and it would hurt any team. You lose a couple guys, um, and your starting lineup. And John Carter had didn't feel well either, and so, you know, stuff happens. Um, I think uh, I'm trying to create that that um, I, I'll use the word. I guess I'm trying to create that chip on the shoulder. I tried to pump them up, Patrick, and we did really good things. But we didn't we didn't get to what we wanted. We didn't get the ring. We didn't get to cut down the banner. We got that, you know, we, we didn't get to the NSA tournament. They didn't get to experience that. And that's what I want, you know, this team to experience. Um, it's special playing in the NSA tournament. People say you're crazy playing the schedule you're playing. Yeah, maybe. But there's only one team of our league going to the NSA tournament. We're not a two bid league. We're a one bid league. So I'm going to try to make it as tough as as competitive as I possibly can in a non-conference schedule. So now, because I think we can do it, I, I think our guys are proven they can they can win a big game or two, like you know beating George Washington here, or Georgetown on the road. And so why not challenge them? Um, so that's that's important. So we're going to challenge our guys, challenge our program, um, and uh, and try to be better for it. You know, come. Uh, you know, come the Patriot League season, and as we get deeper into this thing, hopefully we can, uh, you know, look back at a game or two we play non-conference, and it helps us prepare for the next game. So, uh, you know, we, we've done a lot. I think our guys, I'm, I'm really, really proud of our guys. It, it was really, really challenging. I mean, as a staff, we, we sat there sometimes for practice, didn't know who was coming. We didn't know what call we we're going to get. He, he's – He's out. He's contact tracing. He's out. Or he doesn't feel well. Or Hannah's testing guys at lunchtime and says, you know, we sat there before I made the practice plan up, you know, to finalize it. Like, who are we going to have today? Because we didn't know who we were going to have. Um, who was going to get, you know, who was going to pop a positive? What staff member was going to pop a positive? So it was, it was challenging all the way around. Travel was challenging. You know, as John Schofield said, I mean, you know, cleaning balls after, you know, a couple times during practice, cleaning the chairs, having guys stand on X's. So these kids accomplished a lot. I'm not, 
I'm really proud of our team. Um, but now there, there is a but to it, though. We didn't get to the NCAA tournament. So now that's, you know, we got to refocus and, you know, we got to we got to try to get there. For, for this year, you, you mentioned you obviously have plenty of experience. Cam's gone as well, though. Uh, point guard situation. How does that kind of look for you guys since that does seem like the, the one spot? Yeah. So uh, P.J. Roach, a young guy who didn't play uh, at, at all last year, is a, is a point guard, and he's he's in that position. Uh, Austin Inge is in that position. Austin's been hurt. I got to be mm-hmm. honest with you, that's kind of um, – you know, I had to move Greg Summers to the point because Austin's been out for almost 10 days, two weeks. And uh, so we've been playing Greg there at times. So trying to give us a different look. I'm hoping that somewhere along the way that's going to help us as we go through the non-conference, we get ready so we can do some more things, get different guys on the floor. Um, you know, we're experimenting. Um, we'll do it today again is we're trying to play uh, – two four men like Jalen Walker and uh, Ty Nelson. We're trying to play them, those guys together um, along with, you know, a John Carter and a point guard. So we're trying to play some different lineups. Um, always trying to keep in mind, let's get a guys who can really score. Let's get our best guys on the floor. We got to move them around. We got to move them around. So point guard is a uh, point guard is really, really important. I'd say it's a, it's progress in motion. Uh, some days I walk off the floor, I'm, I'm pretty happy with them. Some days I walk off the floor, I'm not so happy with them. And I got to remember that they haven't had a lot of experience out there. Um, and so we, uh, and uh, Trey Brodnack is a guy I didn't play last year. He's been playing out there for us as well. So we got a lot of guys out there and hopefully we get that thing figured out here and shortly. Wags, got any questions? Well, you sort of answered the question in that one uh, answer, but uh, you said the strong non-conference schedule, the Virginia, Virginia Tech, Louisville run was on purpose. And then you kind of indicated it's because you think you got a championship team and you're trying to prime them for NCAA play. Is that the the answer? Why you bolt up the schedule? Yeah, well, it, it's <laughs> – yeah, it's uh, Louisville was a game that we were going to play last year. We couldn't play. We had a signed contract, so we had to go ahead and play it this year. Um, we also got George Mason in there. Yeah, I, I think our, we got an older team. We got a lot of guys that's played a lot of minutes. And, um, you know, I think we have enough talent to, to win games in a non-conference. Is it going to be challenging? Absolutely, it's going to be challenging. Well, Patriot League season is going to be challenging for us as well. So let's try to uh, – we, we tried to schedule, you know, like I said, Louisville was from last year, and Virginia popped up, and, and um, Virginia Tech we got in the Veterans Classic. We're always going to play somebody really talented there and always a Power 5 team. So that one is has always been there. Um, Louisville was from last year, so we added Virginia. And then George Mason as well as a team in the Atlantic 10 that um, – you know, we had to return Marist. We, we had to return some games. So uh, we had to return Mount St. Mary's. So we got some games in a row. In the COVID year, you know, uh, hurt us in the sense that we had to return some of these things this year rather than last year. So obviously Cam Davis was the go-to guy. At the end of games, you wanted the ball in his hands. He was going to take the big shot. Yep. Who's yep. doing that this yep. year? I mean, I think – don't know yeah, Bill. That's a great question. Uh, you should have been in the staff meeting this morning at nine. You could help to answer that because uh, we were talking about late game scenarios, late game situations. Uh, we, 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 you know, we do a drill. I don't know if we're practicing six days, three or four of the six days, we do a victory drill at the end of practice, uh, which simulates late game scenarios. So I, you know, I put guys blue, gold, blue, you're up two, you're shooting a free throw, could put you up three, gold, what are we going to do? We, you know, we give scenarios. Uh, I don't know who that guy is yet. It may be the guy that's playing well that night. Um, as right now, if uh, if we need to drive it, try to drive the ball and, and get it to uh, the basket, I might have Summers drive it. If we need a jump shot, I'm going to have Carter shoot it or Dorsey uh, when he gets back. So if we need to score inside, um, you know, maybe it's Richard Njoku. I run something to get him the ball to try to go to work inside. I think it's going to be a, uh, 
whoever I feel is playing well and wherever we have the mismatch. Last year, Cam was the mismatch. I don't think guys could really guard him. He was a really talented young guy, and uh, and he knew, you know, what we were doing, and he played for three years, and so he wanted that. I don't know who's going to want the shot yet, Bill. I'm going to have to put guys in a position to, as we continue to practice and go through this non-conference, that they, you know, there's some guys I think can do it. They just don't know it yet. Um but if somebody's got a hot hand in the game, that's what I'm going to, uh, depending on what we need uh, as of right now. So kind of dovetailing with that, uh, and I don't, I'm not trying to pick on him, but when I first saw John Carter as a plebe, I said this guy's going to be a multi-time first-team All-Patriot League player, and it hadn't happened. Um, and now it's, it's the end of the line's coming. He's a senior. I yep. mean, is John Carter going to – Take the ball by the yeah, I think he's had a better – I think he's had a really good fall so far. He's been very, very consistent for us. He shot the ball pretty well. Um, you know, last year I would say to your year before, his, his shot, you know, he just lost it. Um, worked hard, worked hard, worked hard. Was frustrated by it. Uh, I think his growth and maturity. He's a very, very mature young man now. And uh, I think that's really helped him. Um, he's had a good fall. I think he's playing with a lot of confidence. I think he's a better defensive player as, uh, as I ask him to be. I think he's a better rebounder, which I've asked him to be. So he's done the things that I've asked him to do. And, um, you know, but we've got, I don't think we had anybody on the all conference preseason team, which is fine. Um, we'll, we'll use that as well. So, um, yeah, John's going to have a good year for us. I, I think John's are going to have a really good year. I, I think our seniors are going to have a good year for us, and um, which will help propel us to where we get to where we want to go. Last for me, what do you want to say about your team captain, Richard Njoko? Uh, he shows how far Richard's come that he's a team captain here at Navy. Yeah, great, great young man. Uh, great, great young man. Uh, you know, I always wanted, you know, our captain to be the hardest worker and Rich is really a hard worker. He is really a hard worker on the court. Um, uh, I've had to ask him some days, Rich quit, you know, he throw his body around and he's flying over to the scores table again. And, uh, you know, you gotta, you know, and you got so much tread on the tire and uh, make those plays when it's, you know, when the game's on, but you got to try to, I don't want you to get hurt here, but uh, everybody respects Richard. Uh, that's why he's a captain, not only on the floor, but off the floor. He's very good for the younger players. Uh, the road hasn't been easy for him. He's, he's worked really hard academically. He's really worked hard in the weight room. He's worked hard on the court to try to make himself a better player. He's more skilled. Uh, so he's worked in every aspect, Bill. And, and so it's a credit to him that the guys feel really comfortable with him being uh, the team captain, provided very good leadership. I can tell you, he hasn't, he's, you know, he's, at, he's staying on the sideline every practice, but it's different when he's not in there. It is different. And uh, we're hoping to get him back today to dummy some offense and let him shoot some. And I'm hoping by next week that he's hopefully his full go.